So, living with wood fires, I love it. But one of the things I like most is making a wood stack that has to be really neat because I've got to look at it from the kitchen for two years. The most important thing I think is preparation. And here I've cleaned out one end of the woodshed, put a couple of pallets down. Really important to have airflow all around your logs, including underneath them. And I've got a really good mixed load of hardwood there. Big ash blocks on the left and a mixture of oak, birch, hazel and really tough holly. Now, the sort of wood stack I want to make <coughs> is in the back, well I forget which page it is, but in the book I show three different types of wood stack. One is where you just, you've got loads of room, so you just throw everything in a great heap in a barn or something. That's fine if you've got a really big shed. If you're a bit short of space, you either put a retaining wall like the one on the left or what we're going to do on the right, stack everything tight. Now this bit, interestingly, I was thinking of deleting <laughs> because it's a real beginner's error on my part and it's all caused by idleness. This is a big ash log and it just naturally was dry side up and I thought it's ash. I can split that <coughs> and I hit it and I hit it more or less in the right place. In the end I've hit that seven times and it is nowhere near splitting. So I decide to stop being so blasted idle and turn it over. And if anyone needs a lesson on the difference between splitting your wood green or splitting it dry, this is it. Watch how easy this goes once I'm hitting a fresh cut surface. Look at that, three hits and it barely took the third one. Anyway, the reason I'm doing this is in part the preparation for my wood stack is to create as many square blocks as I can. I use these on the front retaining wall. And if you've got a really good log like this, I mean, it could be pine, it could be poplar, it could be anything that splits easy, spruce. <coughs> but I've got ash. And it's not that difficult. See the blocks there? It's not that difficult to split these into square and rectangular blocks. And they are so helpful when it comes to building the wood stack. As I say, I talked about building the stack, but actually the preparation for building it is really important. I quite like them in different sizes, small ones, big ones. I've thrown all the bits of wood that I don't think I need to split in before I start. None of that will be easy to stack, or well, some of it will, but <clears throat> if I push it all to the back, um, and I'm dropping it down the back there because rats nested there last time, and if I block up the passages, hopefully I won't have rats in my woodshed. And now the blocks. So I've pushed all the small bits to the back, get them out the way, and then bringing these forward, they're going to be so useful when it comes to stacking. So this is my front wall. As I say, it's child's play. This wall will need to be tied into the rest of the stack later on. But right now, making as many of these square and rectangular blocks as I can is really the secret to having a, a good quality attractive wood start wood pile. <clears throat> Incidentally I didn't realize how many times I used my boot to help finish a log until I watched my own filming. To help with the corners I sometimes cut one like this 
I mean, that's really, really strong and will give me a strong corner. Finally, <laughs> yeah, I make a start on the other logs and that's a bit of dry holly. Really, really tough. Now at this stage, I don't want to build the retaining wall too high. One, I've got to step over it. And two, I've got plenty of space behind it to put logs for a while. I'll tell you what, that's nowhere near as neat as I would like it to have been. But never mind. Also, some people build patterns into that front wall. I've never been that fancy. I was just about to use the chopping block and spotted this little woodlouse making a run for it. I wouldn't kill if I didn't have to, so I'll give him the time to get away. Something I do that I don't see many people do is I use two or three chopping blocks back to tough holly. In fact, the birch isn't much better. We cut our wood in the winter and left it in stack. And of course, that's a terrible thing to do with birch. This birch is spalted, which is a mid, well, it's a form of decay. Most of that wood has got some sort of decay and it's awful, a real shame, a lot of heat energy lost. I like stacking wood and here getting away from the square blocks I'm using some longer pieces of birch to tie in that front wall. Ah, now <laughs> I always leave the toughest log till last. I've split the side away from where the crotch was well, and um, now the crotch itself. Note that was upside down, so you're sort of hitting towards the roots. Now this is the other thing. These logs, one, if you if you bought a load of wood and these came in, you'd be really disappointed, but I love them. Uh, that piece of beech will make a good bird box, just about. But this piece of hawthorn is exceptional. Now myself or my father would chisel that out a little bit, put a bottom on it, and then choose whether we use that or that as the entrance hole. But what a superb nest box that will make. So there we are, the finished wood stack. I'll tell you what, for all the effort, and that took me best part of the afternoon, it doesn't actually look like much wood. Maybe that's the benefit of packing it tight. I need a lot more wood to fill that space. Yeah, it's really not very impressive. Never mind, never mind. I was once told I was too easily pleased with my own work. Well, I'm not particularly pleased with that. Okay, chopping block stowed, axe away. Now, there are two main things to do with stability. And the, and the critical thing to know is that drying wood shrinks by up to 20%. And wood stacks have been known to fall over. Now, if you've got children or, or whatever, you don't want your wood stacks falling over, apart from just the extra work. So <clears throat> building stability in is really, really important. And I do two things for that. One, you've already seen, I overlap logs a bit to help them tie in. But then something I've always felt is cheating, really. I use short planks, um, a short flat plank of wood, about two foot, two foot six long, coming from the front right back into the stack. I think that really, really helps the overall stability. It's like tying bricks together or breeze blocks when you're building a house. The second thing is when I get up to about three quarters of this stack, I'll build a step in so the top of the stack is much narrower and that will move the centre of gravity right back into the stack and away from the front. 
the next thing is, I'm, um, that was a pigeon, the next thing is, <clears throat> this wood stack faces northeast. We almost never get rain from the northeast, so I'm not expecting driving rain on this stack, or I could have used the cleverest trick of all, which is to have your outer logs sloping, well, like that, so that then they naturally shed the rain and stop it getting inside. I saw that in an ancient stone building in the west of Ireland once. Absolutely brilliant building where every flat stone was angled slightly. So it was a self-shedding dry stone house. Incredib incredibly skillful. Those, it was monks did it. Anyway, um, I think that's it. As I say, the planks feel like cheating, but I'll show you in the wood stack next door here, um, the one I'm going to burn this winter, that it, it's almost invisible, but it helps hugely. As we look at these wood stacks, uh, they're, they've been up just over a year now. The first thing is I stepped them in with a slope. So I, I didn't make a single step, I've made a curve on those. The next thing, although I feel it's cheating, the planks of wood I put in are barely visible. There's one here. There's a little plank of wood going right through to make this left-hand side stable. And I saw another one somewhere. Um, oh, there's another one. Not sure why that one's there, but it must have made sense while I was building it. Ah, oh, and there's another one. But those planks go back about two feet. They hardly show and they massively help with stability. I think this pile of oak has them as well, but yeah, other than that slither, which is just helping level up a step, I can't actually see any. I've hidden them well. Sometimes I indent them two or three inches just so they don't show, because as I say, I'm mildly embarrassed that I'm sort of cheating with my stability. Now there's one. Anyway important to keep your stack stable while they're drying. I hope some of that was useful to you. I enjoyed it all. And afterwards I went off down the woods to have a look at the stacks I've still got to cut up. As I say, I love a life living with wood fires. I hope you do too.